Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and if you guys haven't seen the previous video about how to get into this mission, or if you're watching this while it's live this weekend, I wanted to give you guys a chance to run through basically all the little nooks and crannies of the Anomaly mission, where you get the Whisper of the Worm, and just kind of a few tips and tricks about the entire thing as we go through. So, um, what I've done, if you guys haven't seen the previous video, I'll link it above. It is a kind of work yourself kind of breaking the map and you can get into the mission and explore it without a time limit. Now the reason that's important is because when the mission activates you have to be in the right, you have to have the Taken public event in the Lost Oasis, you have to find the Taken enemy, shoot him and then go into the portal. Then you actually start in the Lost Sector, there's a way to get through that so definitely check out the previous video. Uh, you can get through the Lost Sector quicker and jump into this mission. And it's still in a time limit once you're in there so the faster you do everything the better. And that is why this is going to be important. I want to show you guys what to expect, what to look for, where to jump, where places if you have certain classes and exotics you can skip certain things, uh, what classes are going to be helpful, and then also when it comes to the enemy rooms, a few things to look for and just a couple glitches to look at as well. So kind of an in-depth run through of the anomaly and hopefully this will help all of you get the whisper of the worm and just being able to explore it, be comfortable with it, that way you're in that time crunch you're ready to go and you're feeling good about it because the first time I jumped in there really wasn't sure kind of explored and never even made it through and this time I want you guys to be able to see everything that's there know what's important on the first time know what's important on future times with the heroics and things like that now first things first if you've glitched in where I was you're basically just gonna land on this little platform back here once you go through the lost sector and you drop down you're basically very close to this platform up here this is kind of the first thing you walk into and you see the start of this area this kind of like blue glow, red lit area. Now, the first chest that you're gonna get to is right near this area. So what you would do before you jump down to the platform I'm on and keep going, you would actually walk slightly over here to your left if you're coming from that side, and there's gonna be a little window up here I'm gonna jump up and show you. One note, don't even worry about the chest because they're not even there the first time you do it. They're only there on the heroics, and what they do is help you with the exotic catalyst for the item and the whole thing you're going for is the whisper of the worm this is the black spindle b sniper rifle pretty much one of the best things in the game right now so when you come back in here on your heroic and you're looking for the chests you'll run up to here don't jump over run over here and it's right up here and i want to jump back and show you guys so you'll be over there and it's right up there pretty easy to spot but that's where the, the actual chest is going to be your first one i'll die a few times during this explanation just so you guys can see where everything's at Nice thing is, you're gonna keep spawning in here. So, once you've done that one, you know, if you're going through looking for the chest on the heroic, you know, you probably want to do the heroic the first time, and then you'll actually start seeing the chest, because you gotta do it once to get the gun, do it the second time to get the catalyst, and then when you finally open the chest, you're actually gonna start getting the essence, which is what allows you to eventually unlock the catalyst. So, Stage one, get the gun, don't worry about the chest or anything, just get through this as fast as possible to fight the enemies. Stage two, do the heroic, the same thing. Hopefully you're more comfortable because the enemies are even a little bit harder. But your gun is really, really going to help you. Stage three, explore for quests. So if you're running through, what you're going to do is come down here, jump through, and this is where it's all going to get interesting. So you'll notice these little platforms that pop in and out. These are off and on, and there's little things that are going to push you off. So you can run by that one. Now, depending on your build, be it Titan, you can run Lion Rampants, which will help in a few specific areas I'll show you. Uh, Warlock, if you've got Phoenix Dash, that's not a bad thing to be able to kind of throw yourself into walls occasionally. Uh, there's certain things that are going to be helpful, certain jumps in certain places. But if you notice, if I look straight forward, the angle of this wall is actually slightly you know, away. So if I literally fall straight down, I'm never going to make it to the platform. So you actually have to guide yourself towards the platforms. And that's one of those things that if you're going too quick, you may not catch. Or if you don't realize it the first time, you'll fall behind. So when you jump down, you'll notice down there, there's a lot of things that pop in and out, shooting in and out. So you get a kind of a tricky run just to get to this platform here. So when you jump down, usually what I'll do is pop to this platform here. And then maybe if I need another spot, you know, kind of float around, take a quick landing here in between a couple things, and then jump to that platform. If you got Lion Rampants on, you can go, you know, basically straight there, and I'll show you guys that. So fall on down, veer towards the wall, kind of slow your fall. Well, I slowed it too little. That's going to happen sometimes as well. You know, this is just one of those things. 
show you guys as we go. But yeah, when you fall, pretty much save your fall. And really try and push yourself into this wall as much as feasibly possible. Now from here, you're trying to get to this platform and work your way over there. But I'll show you guys. If you have the line rampants, you can definitely make it there. Now I'm going to miss just so I don't actually mess it up for the others. But if you got a Titan and you got Lion Rampants, just glide on over. You glide for freaking ever. And hopefully I didn't touch it too long. And But yeah, that's just proof you guys can land it. Hopefully it doesn't. There you go. I'm back up top. Hopefully I don't get pushed off when I res. This will be cute. So I'm actually back up top again. So it wants to throw me here. So it all depends on however long you kind of stand in a location. If you got a tricky jump, hang there for a few seconds. And that's actually going to help you spawn back there. Uh, so you don't actually have quite as far to travel. Without Lion Rampants or another class or a Hunter and Double Jumping Around, pretty much what I would recommend is to go out and around a couple layers. So if you're going to triple jump around, try and land somewhere right in this section here. Kind of about the second major gap. And then, on a normal jump, you should be able to kind of fall your way down here gracefully. Now, there's nothing behind you. Don't worry about this back here. Nothing there. So next, you're going to come forward, jump from this platform onto the singly red-lit little area here. And then, when you jump over here, you're going to want to go to the left. I tried to go to the right first, and I was like, oh, maybe there's some tricky path around there, because it's kind of hard to see anything. Go left. It's a lot better, because that's pretty much the only way to go. So, land over here. And then what you're going to want to do is go, it's basically right around the corner. This is actually what you're jumping to. So really just jump out and then whatever your next jump is, use that to land right here. Now this is another one of those crazy moments. It's kind of a tough jump to do. I've missed it a few times. But if you have the line rampants, you can literally go straight across to this little ledge right there. You kind of have to grab the tip. So kind of get a nice little jump. And then if you can get your float across, and it's not a perfect jump. It may take you a couple tries. But you go so far, that was actually a pretty bad one, you can make that jump. I have made it before. So those of you with Lion Rampants, if you're exploring, spend a couple times, try it out. And this is kind of the thing I'm telling you. The farther you hang on one certain point, the easier it is to get to it. But see, that's like a terrible jump right there. If you go for it again, I'm trying to get this jump for you guys so you can actually see it. There, that's a little bit higher. Not my best. The higher you are, and then the dash... See, and then I actually would have touched it. So I jumped off. I was just trying not to stay there long. Because I want to show the rest of you guys how you can do it. But if you got Lion Rampants, they're a nice thing to have in this place. But for us casuals, or other classes of course as well, jump around, land on this rock, and you're going to go for a little bit of a crouching walk. And you notice these want to push you off. Now they're pretty easy to go by on the first three. Pretty straightforward. They're pretty obvious. This one you can actually see the lip sticking out. So you'll wait for that one to go. Now, you can skip two of these from what I hear. You can technically run straight if you keep going. But depending on where you're at, if you keep going and you get pushed off, you might. But I wouldn't try and follow someone trying to do two. Now, I'm going to go back to this one because I want you to see it. If you're waiting and you come up to this one, you're going to want to look for literally. It's hard to see, but it's like the actual seam of the corner because this one is actually behind it. So it's hard to tell when you're going quickly. But you actually want to look for the seam when you're coming up. So if I'm going here... Try and have your gun zoom in and look for the little black line that represents the seam. Now the final one is a bit more tricky. When you're up here, it's going to recede, but then come right back out. So it kind of does a double. So it's going to go out and then come right back. So usually what I'll do on this one is kind of creep over here a little farther. And just as soon as it starts retreating, follow it back. Now it's going to want to push you back out, but if you already pass the way through it, it's fine. Two people might be able to make it through there, but honestly I wouldn't push more than two. One's safer. Now from here, same thing I was getting to, just jump straight across like any normal class can, triple, float, whatever you got. There you go. Now, from here you can go under, you can go over. Typically for me, I'll just crouch under. This little recess right here, just be careful. If you do start to fall, just kind of jump up and go. Now this little elevator is a little tricky. You cannot clamber up to it. If you get to just the edge, you will still fall. So you actually have to land flat on it. Now there's one other thing to pay attention to. Sorry about the lighting, that thing is bright. See this thing that pops in and out? If you try to ride it to the top and then jump across, it's basically going to blast you off. So make sure you land it properly first. I can ride this thing up and down. So if I get full height, basically my jump would likely take me into that and you could get blasted out into oblivion. To avoid that, you're going to want to try and get just underneath and then try and get some increased jump 
like, you know, a double tap, get a little height going, and then from here, just jump straight on over and skip getting too high on the platform. So don't write it all the way up, just underneath where this thing's not going to be a factor, so you kind of slide in between. Now from here, you're going to want to run and turn directly left. Looks like there's going to be stuff down there. There's nothing. There's no chest. There's absolutely squat. So don't worry about that. But that first chest is right there at the beginning, and you have not missed a chest in between. promise you. But honestly, this place just looks kind of awesome. So occasionally just take a look at what they built. It's pretty sweet. So run in here, and we're going to get to this next section. Now this part isn't really that tricky. There's just some points where if you kind of miss what's you know, coming up from the ground, you don't quite have your jump with you, you will slide down there and it takes a long time to fall. You'll spawn right back here, but it's not that big of a deal. But if you come through, you'll notice the top parts can kind of pinch you, but you guys will see that tried to push me off. It's only two little sections. It's not really that bad. It's just one of those, just kind of be aware of what's coming for you. And if it slides you down, it just kind of sucks. Now this next section kind of gets interesting. For one, again, loving the looks of these places. Bungie art team, you guys are crushing it. So just the lighting in here, the red and the teal make it really a cool contrast. So each one of these little platforms has a little blaster. If you land on it, you will be flying. So what I would typically do, and you can probably figure out your own pattern and rhythm anyway, usually what I'll do is if I know it's getting ready to charge, I'll head towards it. And then you want to kind of bounce between these three. Now, if that one you can kind of hover above, if you land quick, then just kind of work your balance between those two. But those two are pretty quick. Now, once you land on this platform, when you're in the actual mission, there's an enemy right up here. Now, if you got a group of you guys and not everyone you guys can make it through, somebody's going to want to turn around and shoot that thing in the head. Because it's got a decent amount of health. That's the thing about all the enemies in this mission. They're about 385 or 390. They're rough. So, keep that in mind. When you make the first two jumps, when you land here on the third one, if you're separated, maybe you're going like slightly in sequence and you can go quickly. But if you have to, say for example, wait, if you're a Titan or something, you can drop a wall right here so you can just pass through it and keep going and not get shot. It will help. They're knights. They have a lot of health and they hurt. So keep that in mind. Third platform, enemy behind you. He's actually killed me. It's not that big of a deal. You usually re will go reland right here. But if for some reason you got to redo the jumps, it kind of sucks. Third platform, wait for it to blast through, and that's again, you might have to wait for that thing to go so you don't get blasted because you have to crouch and walk slow. So that's why the timing of the night death is important. Now here, you're going to have a couple jumps. You will also have a knight over here, depending on how you're waiting for the final platform. When you're over here, he may be going for you. So just be aware that there's a fourth one. Heads up, this is the gun in case that was spoiler warning, but I think that's probably why you guys are here. So same principle, wait for it. If you get a chance to wait for it to go, otherwise just hover above it. But once it's actually charging up, just try and land. And then if you can kind of come around here and land on this one. Now this is the point where he's definitely got access to you, so be aware. Biggest thing about this, if it's closed, jump to it. If it's open, jump to it. If it's open, make sure you pass through it quickly. Or if it's closed, just make sure you're going to land right on this platform. So typically what I'll do is actually go when it's closed so I can just run straight through here. But even if it's, you know, closed, when you get here, you have this baby platform to land on. Typically what I'll try and do is, like, if I'm jumping from there to here, I will go when it's closed, so it's going to be open when I get here. Nothing else too crazy so far. Pass on through. Jump on this little ledge. And now this is an interesting room. Also a very cool room. A couple things. These little things are portals, and most of them, if I go in here, are going to shoot me out down here and I fall down into oblivion, which sucks. There are two that work. If you are on the mission, you want to run straight for this one, right over here, top right. And it's actually easy to run across because all you're going to do is stay here and you're going to jump onto these little ledges and run straight over. By the time you get to about the second to last one, you're going to spawn an enemy, which is another knight, way up here. If somebody can tag him and stagger him as you guys run straight in or just try and run straight into it, you can. When you're doing a chest run, you're going to want to go to the left. This would probably be your third run, so don't worry about it for a little while. But the way you're going to have to go on the left is going to be kind of go here, jump down, and then over and across. So this one's fairly simple. Literally, all I'm going to do, I'll see if I can make it back to this platform, is just jump over here and land on this little ledge. And you guys notice you can run straight across the whole thing. There's not much encumbering your path. Just look for the knight at the end, move quickly, and you're going to jump in the top platform. And I'll show you where it's at when I go. But I'm going to get jump back over here and show you guys the other side so when you're doing the chest run, you know what's coming. So from here, first you're jumping on big old Sphere Man. 
If you can make it farther onto the ledge, cool. Usually I make it right about here. Now this ledge is here, but then you have this giant obstruction in your way, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So here, what you're going to want to do is land on the sphere, down here a little bit, and then you pretty much have to jump out and around and get up into the next area. Now if you can get enough height that you can actually clamber up, that might work. But if you land down here, it's not that big of a deal. All you want to do is try and, you know, jump on this sphere over here. And of course I fail. Yeah, that's how far you fall down. And that's what kind of sucks about that one. But, you know, not a perfect run. So from here, again, trying to get as high as possible. And then just try and get a little elevation, run up on the sphere. And then you're going to run up into this one. So these are what the portals look like. They spin. They're a little annoying to stand on. But that's the portal. So that is the entrance of the room. If you're going for just the mission, jump to the left, run straight across there, and you're going into the farthest top one that you can. Stay on the top, try not to fall. Your knight will spawn in this region here. If you're going for the chests, you're going for the top right one. Gotta go down and around, and you'll just fall down in here, take a little path, and here you go. Every place that there typically seems to be a chest is gonna have these little, like, busted you know, fallen guys in here. I don't know if it's every place. Some of them might be kind of not. But the idea here is the fact that these are um, usually signifiers for chest. Most of the places with a chest have them. So from here, now that you've fallen down into here, you can just run straight out. So pick up your chest. It'll be in there. Follow your path out. And then it's literally just this little path where the knight is. Actually, for, no, he's actually above. So it's this little path that you'll run on up. And it goes for a pretty long ways. You can almost make the full run. But pretty much what I like to do is jump on this little ledge and then jump up top. Because usually I don't have quite enough vertical to get up there. But that little leg wor ledge works and then you're here. So if you're doing the mission, just run straight along, straight in this path. And jump into this tube and you're good to go for the next section. Top left is the chest. Top right is your exit of the room. Fall on down. Slow your fall a little bit and you're good to go. Follow the light, and this is if you've heard anybody talk about the green room, this is what you're doing. Now, if you're on the mission, stage one, you do not have to go very far. It looks like you might need to, but you actually don't. I don't even know if this is meant to be here or not, that's why I'm going to show you everything in this room. But, like, if I come out of the tunnel and I look in here, I'm literally going to barely into the room, drop down one little ledge, and you see this little thing that looks like a little halogen light, turn right back around, and you're going to crouch and go right underneath the entrance you are in. That's when your light comes on. So there's a little halogen light. It takes a little bit for the light to come on, but there's a hole down here, and you will literally fall down and go to the next area. I'll come back to that. Don't forget it. All right, so I got out of my little wedge hole. But again, you'll enter the room, turn right around, follow the grassy rock and the lamp right back in that hole, and you're going to go to the next room. But if you're looking for chests and trying to figure out everything, there's some stuff to do in here. There are two chests in this room. First one, when you enter in, watch this crack in the ground. You'll fall down and there's a whole area down there, but it's more just time consuming than anything. So you're going to follow the path basically right here to the left. And the first crack in the wall, just go straight between it. Try not to fall down. Again, they're trying to mess with you. But hang left, run straight back in here, turn another left, and you see this little hole in the wall. You're going to go underneath. And as I said, usually some uh, Vex down here. I probably said the wrong class earlier, sorry. But yeah, a couple of Vex. Here's your chest. This is going to be another one. Now from here, come back out. And we're going to go find the fun chest. It's at the very top of this room. Now there are a couple ways to get here. The intended way, which is kind of interesting that people have already broken this thing, is to start by jumping on little grass ledges literally from the beginning. So you would be right here. And you're going to look for a little grass ledge, just like this. All of these are all the way around the room, and they go for quite a ways all the way up to the tippy top. And you're literally going to end up right in this little crevice, but you're going to end up way up here. So right there is the final ledge. Then you'll fall down in here, and there's one little ledge that takes you back to a chest. So the original path that people were taking was what I'm doing right here. These little thin ledges. And they're kind of tough to land on at first, then they get a little bit more forgiving up here. So you're up here, and up here. Now, I'll tell you now, none of this is required. None of those early jumps are required. See this big giant sphere and these rocks I'm standing on? 
So literally the one I just jumped off of, just jump on this rock and start it. So you don't have to do these initial ones. I think it's a way for you to see the grass and kind of know. But we're just going to go vertical and then go around the room. So if you just run in and you're going for the chests, jump on this. And then we're going to start going up. So jump here. Up on this little ledge here. Jump inside the little uh, valley between these two rocks. Then you're going to jump up to this. And if you jump straight up, you'll get it. Because, again, everything in here is at a slight angle. So remember that. Jump on up here. Not too bad. Work your way around this little wall. And then from here, you got to go a little vertical. You're going up to this little nook. So straight up. Try and clamber your way up there. And the good thing, sometimes these little corners are rounded, and they're good to try and clamber up. Next, we're going up here. Then we're going up here. Next one's over here. Now, the next part is straight across. Now from here, you're going up to one more ledge. And one more up here. Actually, I went one too far. But yeah, you can make a couple steps actually up here. Then you're going to come up to the ledge I was pointing at. And then we would go around the room. But something that was figured out even later is you can skip this part of it, which you're going really. So it kind of depends on the jump in the class. Frosties will help you hunters, definitely with a triple jump. If you're a Titan, you're going to want high jump. And if you got Lion Rampants, it will help. Um, that's why I'm showing you guys. Depending on your exotics and whatever jump you're on, you will have some options. But what I'm going to do is fall down for a second and show you guys how, how the other option works. So down into the middle. Now, that's the entrance over there. All you would do is literally run straight across. And then what you're going to want to do is jump up here and head back all the way into this little crevice in the back. Straight back here. Keep going. Now, I'm going to do this first without Lion Rampants just to show you guys. Actually, don't even have it on. So, we're going for a high jump. And what you want to hit, it's a little harder to hit the inside edge because Clamber doesn't want to work as well as just this little lower corner. So, back yourself into the wall. Run straight at it. Get a quick jump. And then if you need a dash or a Phoenix dash or something, jump right up there. And then from here, all you do is jump across without failing that'd be good so let me do that again you know there's a lot of practice to this one but it's a fun little area so jump on up clamber on up try not to hit the little rock above point of reference so you know jump across land on this arch i'm gonna go back to strafe jump now just because i don't need height anymore and it just feels weird and then you can jump back to this platform a little bit of grass here and jump up to this tiny ledge. Yeah. And the only difference is where I was before up here was just a little bit higher. So what we've got to do is just climb a little bit from here. So a couple ways you can do it. Actually need to get slightly higher, don't I? I know I've done it before. Sorry. It's actually probably just not as high. Yeah, it's right up here. So... Just one above, and then, so this is literally the thing I was on before, and you would just jump across to where I am. So, if you're going for the chests, and you just run in, so run in the door, turn your first left right in there, grab your chest, come back out, run all the way down here into the ravine, use a high jump in the back of the room and jump up here. If for some reason it's not working, at least you know you got another option from the rocks up and around. From here, everybody's doing the same thing because we're trying to get back to the other side of the room. So from here, jump across, wedge yourself in the corner of the room. Then we're going up. This one's a shorter platform, so just be a little careful with those jumps. This one's also not the biggest. And the biggest thing about the angle coming down, if you have too much force, like riding the wall down, you want to land on the platform. You don't want to land and ride the wall down. The momentum will kick you off. So here I usually skip this one and go straight for the second one. I think all classes should be able to do that one pretty well with a triple or whatever. And then up here, same principle. It's kind of hard to see, but you're going to go up and around. So trust it. It will be there right up ahead of you. 
Then from here, you're going to want to go vertical. So up to this one up top. All the way around to this corner. And then finally on this ledge. The wall is going to be a little weird, so make sure you land it clean. Now, creep to the edge and you're going to see this one right down here. So if you can tell, I'm way the hell up here. Pretty much scratching the sky. But that's the path. If you see it from ab above, it's actually fairly easy. So you start on the rock, jump over here. Work inside, jump up here, go around. Then you'll jump up to that grass, jump there, over here, across, over, up, 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 across there, wedge in the corner, jump, 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 and land. So, that is the full path in the green grass room. Once you're up here, just run yourself basically back into this corner, land on here, crouch, and some more Vex, and there's a chest right in this room. Now from here, it's going to kick you out into, when you fall down, you're going to proceed on to the next area. This is how the original people did it, so props to them for doing it with a time limitation. Falling on down, here we go. More Vex, no chest though. But I think they just seem to signify there's something in the area. Now when you come in, you honestly will just be at a slightly lower level than I am now. If you do the little turn U-turn at the rock, you're just going to be slightly lower than I am. So big thing about that is you're going to be only able to really go to the left. You're not going to be able to go to the right where more chests are. So if you do the U-turn and you're just running the mission for speed, trying to do it for the first or second time, you'll be lower and you'll follow this ring around. And I'll come back to that. But there's a whole path of exploration off to the right. So as we did the full path for the chests, keep going. Path over here. And then an even more giant area. We're going to go jumping all the way through here and end up out there, which you can't really see. But for now, we'll go. So, head on down to the platforms. Keep it going. These are pretty easy to get to. Nothing too crazy. Just want to show you guys where everything's at. Keep it going. Oop. Bad jump. All the way up. This platform is actually not as wide as you think, so don't get too much speed. Float, you know, try and get up there. Land on it. It's got some room. Now, if any of you guys played Destiny 1, looks like a Vex portal, and you are correct. So we're going to go land over there. However you feel like gliding or triple jumping. And there we go. So this is a fun portal, but you're not done. You will use this portal once you get all five chests. So you have the first one in the top of the room. You have the second and third that are going to be um, in the green room. The fourth one is actually on the other side of that wall over there. So how do you get there? you got to jump to this little platform I'm looking at. It's not the easiest thing to land on, but... And it gets a little dark, so you really got to kind of commit and know your placement. If you miss it, you'll have some time. Again, it's a 20-minute mission. If you're just going for chests, time's reasonable. If you're trying to do chests and kill everything, good luck. I haven't done that yet. But we'll just head over here to the crevice. The lighting is fairly obvious where to go. And then over here is where the chest would be. Now, there are two things that happen over here. You can jump back over there and get back to the portal. The main reason to do that is because there's going to be a fifth chest. But the fifth chest is a little hard to get to. Because you actually have to do a little oracle puzzle. So once you've got all those, work your way back. Now, you might want a little lift or... I mean, you can make it, but I've actually fallen kind of down. You can even land on like these rocks down here. And somehow you still survive. I say that as I die. Yeah, I say that truly as I die. I have landed off to the other side. Maybe this side's less accessible. But the idea is once you're... Uh, yep, here. Jump on down. Hit your single platform. Try not to overshoot. Dang it. Sorry, guys. Unprimed jumping. I probably should cut these out. But in case you guys are wondering... Far from perfect. Made it better on the first one. 
It's not as far as you think. Crap. All right, I'll cut this out. One thing you will note, actually, I'll just leave this in here. Depending on how many times you die, you may get kicked back a little bit farther. So being a successful platformer has its perks. Now from here, you're really just trying to get to the ledge. So get a little room, not too far. It's not the biggest platform. Running start, try and get a jump up on it, and you're up here. Now here, once you've done the four chests, you're going to have the oracles appear in front of you. So what I'm going to do is kind of explain how that works. You're going to have seven oracles. They're going to appear left to right. Now, people have figured out the code. So the idea is I'm just going to put the code on screen. You're going to shoot them in order from left to right, and it's numerical. So if it was like one, three, and five, you would shoot the first one, the third one, and the fifth one. Now, if you're trying to solo this for some reason, bring some scout rifles, bring a sniper, because you need to do some damage fairly quickly, especially the last couple. So it's going to be a sequence of three, a sequence of five, and a sequence of seven. These are probably on the screen right now, so that's what they're going to be. But the oracles will pop up, and they're going to be all the way across here. So definitely watch how wide they are so you know how far you need to look. So I'll have the sequences on screen for you guys for this. Once you do all five of those, you'll open a chest. That'll be the fifth chest. You'll get more essence. You're also going to get a ship blueprint, which is really, really cool because actually is a throwback to a Destiny 1 ship, it looks like. I doubt I'm ever going to be able to get up to that thing, but cute little platform of tees. So once you've done all this and you're like, okay, how the hell do I get out of here? Some people may do all this and just leave because it's just a chest run. That's all you need to do. But if you want to keep going, you actually can exit this room. And that's why I'm going to do this all in one video. So back where you think, and then we're going to exit this thing with a bit of a climb. So you guys can see the full area. And start going vertical. A little better jump than that. There we go. So it's quite... Okay, I missed the whole thing. Bye. Try that again. Actually, I... nope, decent ledge. That's going to make me do it again. All right. But yeah. So depending on what you, as you guys can tell, you can hang out in here, but dying has its uh, benefits. Apparently don't run into that light. It doesn't like it. Jumping on up. Try and catch myself from falling all the way down. I did this the first time and then I'm showing you guys in a video and I can't do it smooth at all. So the thing about these angles, the walls will mess with you. It's like they push you back and you don't quite get as close as you think. There we go. This part's easier. It's quite the perspective up here once you get to the top though. Run all the way up. Keep climbing. You got a bit of a hike because we were way down there. Jump up. And now we're on the top. So we entered from way over there. So portal and your return trip is on the upper upper deck so jump for the lights and you can now run all the way back home to the very beginning so if you are wanting to continue to explore this place like if you were working on the glitch and for some reason you're like I don't want to do it again but I want to get back and keep exploring you definitely can so from here let's go land down here run on back and now what you guys see down here is where you would actually enter. So from here is where that little pathway goes from the green room. This is where I would normally walk in and you're at this level. If you do the full circle, that's where you start doing the other chests. From here, we're going to finish up the run towards the boss rooms. So you follow this circle around. Couple little tricky parts here. See if we gotta kinda triple jump or float or hug a wall around. It's it's a bit tight. Yep. And then this actually falls off. So don't go too far down there. But over here you'll see a light way down there. Now it's kind of a cutout, so if you're slightly above it, you will still fall. And then I've missed this jump a couple times. So if you miss it the first time, it's fine. Kinda hard to judge on a Titan. Warlocks, you guys just get instant freeze. But from here I missed. But yeah. 
it's a pretty substantial fall. So if you're on a Titan, you got to slow yourself down earlier than you think, but not too early because you actually got to make it down there. So one big jump, slow it down, kind of hover in. There you go. You don't want to overshoot it because, yeah, that actually drops straight off into oblivion. Then you got to do the jump all over again. Now from here, there's not too much that's going to hurt you. Just kind of see gears above. But it does have like a wall above, so you kind of got to manage your jumps above and below. Walk through here so you get the full lip to walk on. Now you can jump down here, or you can make the jump all the way across. Usually I'll go straight from here over into this little ledge, but if you're not feeling it, you can get over here so you have a straight shot at it. And this is basically where the enemy starts, so you've made it through the jumping puzzle. But at this point, I think everyone can probably appreciate the fact that if you haven't done this before and you're in a 20 minute time constraint, maybe it's not going to go that smoothly. Now you don't have to do those entire separate pieces. If you go straight forward, it's not too bad. But there's enough jumps in here, I might advise, you know, practicing it once or twice. So this is where the enemies start. Now the enemies, I don't have a run through of just like the enemies and who to fight and stuff like that yet. But you guys can at least get a feel for where everything's going to be. Main thing you're going to look for is vandals. You're going to want some solar damage. That is why... The gun you get from this is so important. It's solar damage. It hits like a truck and drops guys really fast. So your first time through and your second time through, even though it's heroic, are probably going to feel about the same thanks to your gun. Because this thing is a monster. So you're going to have this first room. You're going to have a few blights around in here. You're going to need to kill a few blights. Make sure you kill all the enemies. In each area, you have to kill the enemies. Because at the end of each, you're going to have a little kind of blight wall that you won't even be able to get to or shoot until all the enemies are down. So usually it ends up being this is the last blight. There's a few enemies in here, but you're going to have some snipers around, some vandals, a couple knights that you need to pop. So solar is an important thing and arc is an important thing to bring. You'll have a few void shields on some um, wizards. So if you got a third person, maybe they can just focus on that. But arc and solar are your main pieces between centurions and knights. They're pretty crucial. Um, there's a couple places with void so if you're running with three maybe at least you know you can even like get to a certain area and be like all right i'm running arc okay we're to the section okay i'm running void and be able to switch have a couple scout rifles with you of different types scouts are a big key so this is the first room mostly blights some enemies no bosses here second room is kind of a quick one and the times i did it Basically, what I did is I was a Titan, I would pop my super, because there's just a couple of captains, but they have solar shields. So if you can pop the shields and kill them with your super, this room actually goes really quickly. So a super, be it Dawnblade or Hammers, are both good. Look to try and tag as many of the shields as possible. Make sure your buddies are right with you to kind of follow up. This room, if done right with a super, can take like 30 seconds. So this is one that can go fairly quickly. Third one is definitely a little crazier. There are actually five rooms, I guess, if you want to count them all. This one has stuff all over the place. There's definitely knights that are going to be like on this ledge here. There's some vandals across the back wall. Um, there's going to be some enemies over here. And then here you're going to have some wizards, some more vandals, some snipers. Definitely stuff on both sides. This is a pretty substantial room. So you have the first one, medium-sized. Then you have the in-between. Then you have this one that is large. you got blights. You're going to have some... Um, this is where the void shields will kind of come into play. You're going to have some acolytes in the middle. Uh, follow all the way through here. We typically would run up this side, try and get some verticality, and there's blights and there's people in defense. There's some knights across the way. You'll be looking for those. Communication's huge. Try and focus fire, work together. You got to kill everything, and then once it's all dead, you're going to drop down here. Now, the big crucial piece about this room, as soon as you come in here, you've killed all the enemies in here. You're like, cool, okay, cool. It's completely clean. You come in here and you start shooting some of these. There's going to be some phalanx taken phalanx on top of that they come charging at you with solar shields so if you have anything like a thermite grenade so they can walk through it and you can drop their shields something like that will serve you very well um solar grenade with like you know sun bracers whatever you something with like some length to cook them down and their shields will help you because there are just enough guys around here there's scions that kind of surround this triangle and by the time you kill enough of them, those phalanx are going to be out or coming up your butt one way or the other. So look for those. There's a couple of vandals as well. Now the next phase in the final boss room is going to be straight down this hole. But I wanted to actually ask you guys, since I'm going to be out of town and you made it this far in the video anyway. Um, basically, you can actually go explore these areas. 
But if you travel off over this direction, there's going to be a little opening about that far over. And there's a little area. See if I can get back, we'll find out. But if you travel over here, there's a little nook that if you can climb it up. Actually, let's fall it down. No, I actually jumped it over. So I. Nope, not this far. Bye bye. So it's not quite that far, but I actually fell farther down. But I found a little nook and I'm wondering if there's a chest there. So actually. Yeah, I think it was this. This one right here. And there was like a little nook of a room that I could get into. So I'm going to try and drop down, but I want to make sure I die up there. But basically I went farther over than I thought I should. And it allowed me to actually go into a little room. So one of you guys, if you're up for it, go exploring down there. If you got some time um, and you're on a chest run, have one person check out here. So I'm trying to find it real quick. So I will cut if I don't find it. Otherwise, if I do, I'll leave it in here. But I'm going to do one more quick jumping run because I want to figure out where this was at. So not that low. And not that far over. So where was it? So it's up here on this. Oh, here. So right here on this one. Now you can get a little more vertical. I'm trying to remember how I did this. So you can get all the way up here. And the room I'm looking for is actually over here. So you got the blue light. And it's a bit of a hike. But you can actually land in here. And guess what you'll notice? There's a Taken in here. There's a Vex in here. So I have, there's a weird hunch that there's actually a chest over here. And I guess I don't know if everybody's found it yet. I don't know if there's a chest. I'm sure everybody's explored this thing to Kingdom Come. But my suggestion is you might want to try it just to see. So we're going to go ahead and climb back to the top if I don't die. Now we just got to go a little more vertical. Work our way back up the platforms. Sorry about the long explanation, guys. I'll try and put some uh, timestamps in here so you guys can skip some of this. And then the final boss room is below. Now, most of your fighting, if you can help it, is honestly going to be from back here. Um, you're going to have a group of enemies that you have to take out before the bosses actually spawn. And then all three of them will be available. So one thing people have done, especially solos... There's two blights that are really kind of in your way. One off to the right, one off to the left. If you can take one out in the middle, it's cool. But what you can do is if you pop a super, it's going to be one over in this region. You know, try and blow up that blight. Come over here to the left, cure up this blight as well. And then if you got anything else, just pop the blight. Because the idea is if you die in here, it's kind of an awesome looking area. I'll get to this in a minute. But if you die, you kind of just start back at the top, fall down, and keep doing damage. And most of the enemies are going to try and get to you back there. Now, there are plenty of knights. Oh, I'm just in here. That's fine. So, most of your fighting that I've seen is going to be done from back here. And um, if you've got Polaris Lance, it's really good. So, the exotic version of this because you keep getting ammo and you can just keep pelting away at them. Biggest thing does tend to be ammo. Heavy, that's why this sniper is so crazy because you can have infinite ammo. Um... But anything substantial once those shields are dropped. Darcy's actually pretty solid for damage. Uh, but basically managing your heavy ammo is very, very important. And like managing your supers, if you got a Celestial Golden Gun, anything like that to drop the bosses down is going to be helpful. Um, one of them is going to be a knight. One of them, there's definitely plenty of captains out there with the floating black balls of doom. Watch out for those. And then finally, there's also going to be the main Centurion, who is definitely one you want to focus on because the Centurions and their little Axiom Bolts that slowly float at you will kind of annoy you the entire time as you're trying to get some continuous shots off. So watch for those. A couple more pieces. There are a couple glitches. If you can go invisible with a Hunter, uh, you can kind of get back in here and kind of glitch out of the map. I'm going to show you guys where it's at. So you saw you jump there, you come here, now, depending on your abilities of jumping or your class, you can come right around here 
and you're eventually trying to land on that little platform. So I'll show you guys how you can do this. The lion rampants may help this exploration, and there's going to be enemies in here. It's not like you're going to be, you know, trying to get in here invisibly. But if you're trying to kill the bosses from above, if you can go invisible and make like a hell of a run and be like an expert at this. So the idea is what you're trying to do is land on a couple of these weird angular walls. They're not the easiest things to land on, so it's going to take a little practice for me to even show you. So right here, almost, is one. And again, you want to jump high, come around, and then you want to try and wedge yourself into that wall there. Now the hunters have a harder problem with the titan. You can, titan and warlock, you can kind of float around to it. I think you guys get the point. Um, and eventually you get above the map and you can actually hit the enemies from below, from above without having to worry about much. For a hunter, you're going to want to come around here and actually try and land on this, these little bricks here and work your way back up. So there's two different ways to get up there. Depends on your class. I know I'm dying a lot. Forgive me. If you made it this far, you can definitely finish. This is just showing how to get to the top of the map. So here, jump around. Try and land yourself right about here. So this is definitely a fairly safe way. And then you can literally climb up the back of the map and there's really not any enemies that are gonna hurt you up here. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. You might need, if you're over on this side, you might need to flip to high lift, for example. You're going straight up here. So you wanna kind of wedge yourself up here, get in between these, climb up a little bit, come up here. Now it gets a little tricky for jumps. Sometimes like you're gonna fight with it a little bit. Um, so it's a bit touchy at times. I keep getting myself wedged in these little corners. So yeah, but keep kind of pressing through and get yourself out. But the idea is fall right here. You've got this. If you jump up, there's not really anything for you to land on, but you're just trying to get up to that little rock. So if you can jump up here and try and wedge yourself over, land here. Now you can start climbing. So climb up here, up a little bit. Climb up here, climb up here. And you're literally on top of the boss fighting area because they're all going to be down there. So you can kind of duck for cover, peek out, but you pretty much have a continuous shot on all of them. It's not the safest thing, and if you fall down, you're probably going to be in a world of hurt. But if you can get up here while the enemies are fighting, just pull out your sniper and just continuous shots. It's going to be kind of a crazy run. I'm sure there's going to be people soloing it. This seems to be the main place to fight. I mean, you could probably fall down there and get a view. You'd have less to work with. Um, you could also come up to this side if you want a slightly different angle. It's not as cool up here or helpful, it seems, to be way up on this stuff. Uh, but you, if you need some different angles, you can just maneuver around up here. The idea is you're actually on top of the map, and this area is kind of awesome looking. So if you can get up here, it just is cool to see it all. But honestly, guys, that is everything. That's everything I know about this map. What to expect outside of the enemy fight. But if you want to come explore, have some fun, know where the jumps are, get good at the jumping puzzle, learn where the, learn how you've got to figure out your jumps for your class or your platforming abilities, and all of those pieces. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys. If you did enjoy the video, I know it's long, but there's quite a bit to cover. Um, Please leave a like if you guys did enjoy. Leave a comment if you got questions, if you got any tips yourself, any advice. If you guys are doing it over the weekend, if you got the Whisper with the Worm and this helps you, comment below. Just let me know. Um, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, so looking forward to seeing what you guys get to do with this one while I'm gone. But enjoy glitching into the map, enjoy exploring it, and good luck on your runs. I'm guessing it's this weekend, still waiting for confirmation. Summer of Solstice is on Tuesday. I will be back for that weekly reset. And as for the rest of you guys, thank you very much for everything. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash ebontis, twitter.com ebontis, and right here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, hit that alert bell, and I will keep the videos coming. Forsaken is close. We've got so much to talk about with regards to that. Flashpoint will be next week. I will be back. So looking forward to chatting with you guys incognito with everything we got going. See you guys soon. Have a good one, and enjoy the exploration.